the one great thing about house and garage music is it's kind of got this um this kind of like just this you know because I always say that there's two things that that like create time travel as we know it and they are um smells and music and that's what Gary's does it's a time machine like I just see this like I see these people's faces, I see the I I see them light up because I've just taken them back in time to like their first mm. girly holiday, mm. their first true love mm -hmm. before kids, before bills, before like drama when they were young and yeah, fresh yeah, 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 and yeah, living yeah, yeah. their best lives. I and Appa, like I see it, I I literally see it, and people say it. They're like, oh my god, that just took me back in time. Uh, so it you know it's just a really beautiful thing to be able to give to somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, that's why I just love. The genre. You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com. Fox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. All right. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or essential as you need to be, choose to be, want to be. You don't want to be anywhere else, trust me. You can't afford it. It's not worth it. And it just ain't as much fun. Big <laughs> shout out to GraffitiKings.co.uk. Hold tight, no pollen records for all the bangers. Uh, NoPolarRecords.com and uh, strangestation.co.uk. If you've got the television app, you know what time it is. This is strictly for the street culture in you. Sporting art, all the athleticism, mixtapes, live streams, podcasts. We've got it all on now, all right? Free download, Android and Apple. In a world of mediocrity and short attention spans, there is one lady that in my mind <laughs> has not only stood the creative test of time, she, she's the, she just doesn't age. Her voice seems like it was yesterday. <laughs> I remember meeting her for the first time and, and a, a pleasure always to have her in company. The legend, the OG, the person that you need to know about and if you don't need to know about it, get to know, pick your ears back and get ready for the mighty Kelly Little Rock inside the house. What a lovely <laughs> intro, thank you. <laughs> Serves you right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, that was a lovely intro. How are you doing? I'm, I'm amazing, you know. Yeah. yeah, I'm really good. I can't even complain. Since lockdown's been lifted, mm. I've just been working non-stop, which mm. has been great. And I've just got loads of little things happening right now, which I'm really happy about and excited about. Where'd you get the tenacity from? Do you know what? I don't know. Someone asked me the other day, where does your energy come from? I was like, I don't know, because I don't even drink coffee. Like, I don't know. <laughs> we were just talking about this, actually. Yeah. It's like, how, what can we do to find that extra stimulant yeah. for, the, for the morning? I think, I think it's just my passion. It's something, mm. it's, if I'm passionate about it, I'll always find energy for it, you know. Um, if you follow Kelly, as I'm sure a lot of the audience that have been hitting me up wanting this episode to happen mm -hmm. will, um, you, you ex exude? Exude, exude, um, uh, a level of um, polish and quality. And I think, to, if correct me if I'm wrong, you have a, a lot of high standards in terms of what your expectations are at your career and what your expectations are, even at the end of the day, once you've done... Yeah. Like, I just see this tenaciousness coming from you all the time. Oh, thank you. I don't know, I don't know where, that, where that drive comes from other than... Is it a combination of things, and I'm only, this is Henry Hazarding, I guess it. Is it a combination of things whereby you hit a certain um, uh, pl plateau of what you're doing and it's like, right, I, I need to make, I I this is me now and I'm going to make this happen? Yeah. I feel like, you know, um, anyone that has ambition or, or who is ambitious, like, it never ends. Because you look at someone like Beyonce, like, Beyonce is mm. like, at the pinnacle of that kind of career. And she'll always try and outdo herself or surpass herself. And that is kind of the double-edged sword of someone who's ambitious. Cause there's a lot of singers that would love to do what I do and be where I'm at. And mm. I'm like, oh no, I need to get to here. Then when mm -hmm. you get there, I need to get there. Mm -hmm. When you get there, I need to get there. And also I think there's an element of, I just never really felt like I truly got my walk in the sun. Do you know what I mean? Interesting. Yeah, like I, like, I, I don't think I ever truly got my full parade in the sun. So I'm just like, I want that. Interesting you say that. There was a, there was 
I mean, and I said this to Terry a few weeks back, they're, they're, there's a higher echelon mm. in my mind anyway of people that were as much a part of my career soundtrack. You were definitely one of them. Terry was one of them. Lisa Mafia, um, Shola Amar, um, Beverly Knight to a certain degree and, you know, a handful of others, males as well. Um, I, guess it's, I guess for its time... There was there was also another band as well. I can't remember what they were called. Diamonds and dun 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 dun. dun. Oh, um, what are they called? That's big, gonna, bro- big, big brother. brothers, right? Yeah. Um, and I guess it was this transition that was going through with the industry at the time, where you know it was almost like okay to sound like T Pain, but there was this real core awesomeness that was really coming together. Mm-hmm behind the scenes, you know what I mean? And, and songwriters that were ghosting, and I'm sure you were a part of that too, where you were writing for other people and things like that. To be that. fair, I did, I did do a bit of writing for other people, but none of them, like, did anything. Yeah. <laughs> Being honest. <laughs> oh, hey. I wrote for quite a few, like, you know, like, I would always get like, oh, we've got a new girl band, do you want to do some writing? Mm. Do some writing, and nothing really happened with the girl band. Yeah. But yeah, there's a, I've written a few cool tracks for them. Mm. Yeah. But isn't it funny how, like, trends and whatnot that, that come, that emerge just through, I guess, yeah, people's um, complacency to, to just like whatever's there at the time and what they're being fed. Yes. It, it, there, there was certainly a time in that in that decade of hours when yeah. we were coming up that was it felt like, a slight, you felt like you were always slightly compromised. Yeah. I know I did. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I really love the 80s because I felt like in the 80s, everybody was doing their own thing. They weren't all sounding the same. Mm. They weren't, weren't told, oh, make a record that sounds like that. Yeah. Everyone kind of had their own unique individuality. And even though, yes, it was probably heavily pop saturated, mm. everyone just had their own unique sound. Yeah. Like, you know, your soul to soul, your loose ends. Um, like even Madonna, I loved Madonna mm. growing up, you know, because she was quite soulful, you know, mm. and yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. just had their own unique sound and look and vibe. Yeah. And I don't know where it turned, maybe in the mid 90s or maybe yeah. early 90s, where they just started to try and to want clones of people. And I still feel that's apparent now because I feel like a lot of these new, like, up and coming RB singers, American, English, they all sound the same to me. Mm. They've all oversaturated with the with the auto tune. Mm. You know, there's there's a handful of them that stand out because their voices are a bit more unique mm. or because, you know, they've got a particular song that everyone likes. But they actually, to me, all sound very similar. So do all the rappers. Mm. Like a lot of that kind of the grime that's kind of moved on to rap. Yeah. There are a few good tracks that I do really like. I'm never gonna like knock anyone's hustle because I really respect their drive and tenacity and what they're achieving because mm. rap is like UK rap especially is really big right now yeah, like throughout the world yeah. yeah but um a lot of them all their songs sound the same to me <laughs> that I'm an old lady you know like those when older people say all well, this music sounds the same to me it does all sound the same to me I'm sorry but I don't yeah and I, look <laughs> yeah I feel you I feel you I mean just going back to the 80s yeah. re- revival that just went up in my in my head for a second there when you were talking about it. I was mm. like yeah like SOS band mm. princess you mm. know say I'm your number one even you know even that was created by the hit factory themselves Do you know what I really loved when I was growing up Case in the Sunshine band Ooh. <laughs> yeah Baby, that's one of my favourite songs. Every time I hear that song, I get excited. But it's happy stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I don't get, I don't think it's so much like, and this is me speaking here, Um, uh, no, no, this isn't for the general, but I, it's not that I, there is a repetition in a lot of what's going on, but when sometimes I hear the boom bap hip hop of the early 90s, it's going boom, you know, yeah. it's, it's part of the course, isn't it? They're, and even house music mm. for its time, I used to think, oh, it's fucking repetitive. But but here's the thing, like, they're not saying anything new or happy. Yeah. They're not changing the, the tone, yeah. which makes it really hard to justify why is that 808 happening again? Why is that kind of snappy lint drum happening again? I went to a musical event the other day. I'm not going to say what it was called because man's got to make money. <laughs> but... Literally every tune had the same beat. Just jump straight on that story and see where she was. I, 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 I wanted to kill myself. Really? <laughs> yeah. no, I didn't want to kill myself. But no, I was just like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, like, yeah. The tears were dropping into it was the drink. Just like, just change the beat once. And because obviously I don't do drugs. So I, I, th- I, I guess if you're on drugs, that monotonous, like all through the night, yeah, like yeah. that's what that's what keeps you going, isn't it? That's your, that's your vibe. Yeah. But... Um, I struggle with things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you've paid to go into a thing and there's all this hype and buzz and whatnot yeah. going on. But I also think as well, I didn't pay, but I also think <laughs> as well uh, that um, <laughs> creatives, we are, we do have a different way of processing music because sometimes mm. we process it 
as a punter, but most of the time we process it as a creative. Ooh. And even like movies, I think, because like when you do a lot of your own stuff, like your own videos and all that malarkey. And so when I watch movies, sometimes I watch, I sometimes I have to switch off the creative. I'll be like, because yeah, I won't yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, so I'll be yeah. like, oh, that's bad continuity. Oh, mm-hmm. look at that. Like, like. That is shit on this. <laughs> What's happened to the saturation on that bit? Yeah, oh, not that. so much, but I'm also like, that's great cinematography. Oh my God, that's <laughs> awful cinematography. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, I've totally been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't see, it's hard to switch off. And I guess for the the, 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 the Joe public, um, they they don't think, maybe it's just they don't think that deep, which... And that is why, at one point, I don't know if you remember when everyone thought Broken Beat was going to be the new, the next new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the musos, because we jumped on it, because we're like, oh my God, this sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, 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 back. Yeah, and yeah, we were yeah. all in it. And it never did <laughs> And I know why it didn't, because it, it's, it's like... It, like, people just, like, you know, a full English breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a full English breakfast with truffle oil <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and brioche bread. What was the <laughs> name of the... What was the name? Um, oh, what did he... Bingo Records, wasn't it? With um, uh, Zinc. Uh, it, oh, I love Zinc. Oh. But I'm also... I've worked with, and I'm really really big fans of Bugs in the Attic, who, like, oh, were pioneer of that there sound you as well. Go, yes. But it is... It was very, like... Like, it was almost like jazz drums, but, like... Like reimagined as house music, yeah, and it what and, and it is. I'm gonna say it was. That. It is like a phenomenal music, yeah. but I think past the creative brain, your average Joe public who takes drugs on a weekend and goes mm. raving, he wants doof 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 doof. He doesn't yeah. want back to put. He doesn't want all that. Yeah, yeah, true, true. He doesn't true. want it <laughs> as genres for sure. Mm. You're going to notice how we kind of, as Brits, we totally and utterly disowned d- dubstep after about two years. What's up with that? How? I still loved dubstep. Me and too. actually, it's really big. Isn't it really big like in um, America yeah. and in Australia? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's still doing its thing. But yeah, we jumped on it commercially and then we were like... Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. We, we casted it aside. That being said, though, even those genres... I mean, jungle, drum and bass, Jesus. I mean, I can't... I guess it's preference and I can't get enough of that on a, on a bad day, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, that's still going strong. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously on a commercial tip, you know, people like Wilkinson mm. and like, um, no, that thing is true. What's their names again? Oh, um, I did, 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 did. Uh, um, oh, um, D, uh, no, I was going to say ah. D. Oh, what are they called? Rudimental. Rudimental. Boom. Yeah, they kind of keep it going in like in the yeah. pop in the pop um, arena. So, you know, I, I to be fair, I just love dance music. Mm. I've obviously, you know, made my my mark more in like the kind of the garage, house and garage genre. Mm. But I just love music, actually. You say that I, I sing reggae, I sing bashman, I sing jungle, I sing drum and bass, mm. I sing soul, I sing R&B, I sing rare group, I sing everything. And this joint you done with Harry Shot as well, big up Harry as well. Yeah, big up Harry. I've been working with Harry on um, a comic, a motion comic, mm. and we've done the soundtrack and I'm really proud of it. Oh man. I'm really proud of it. It's it so good. Keeps the engine moving, doesn't it? Creative yeah. ideas. And when... also as well, I feel like, in regards to it, I didn't have to. It's like I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to write a song like this, I'm going to write a song like that, I want mm. it to be like this. Or it was just like, I'm listening to this music, this is what it evokes from me, and yeah. this is what I'm going to do. Okay, there's a bit of backstory, this is the person it's supposed to personify within the comic. But it was it was actually just fun. It was just me just re- like having release and fun and and I guess in a form like that's my kind of therapy as well. Like that's I love crazy. writing. I yeah. love that. Um, you, you're not genre specific. I remember, I mean, when we first, I think we bumped into each other a couple of gigs, but more more so in studio locations, one or two times it was like outside the dairy of Brixton yeah, or something, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That used to be the spot. Yeah, it used to be the spot, right? <laughs> studio spot. For me, you were always such a versatile, and still are such a versatile singer, but for its time as well, it, was, it wasn't just, it wasn't garage, just garage and, and house. That, well, like you say, that's where the stamp of yeah. kind of commercial signature came in. Yeah. But, you know, you, you were holding for, I mean, I remember seeing you at Basement Jacks and you just smacking the fuck out of those stadiums. It's yeah. just, no lane. It's like you, you completely move about a lot, even in the early doors. Some people used to be annoyed about that, though. Which really? Which is really funny, yeah. Because um, when, um, I, for a little while, um, Dream Team, they, they'd start doing a house thing. So they yeah. kind of went out of doing the hardcore, like, house, like garage, mm. and then went to like a more kind of soulful house. 
and then I used to do like a like a sing sing Jane kind of thing with them, and we put out like a like a mix CD with me sing Jane, and a few people were like, "Well, why don't they stick to garage? Why are they coming to house?" Blah, blah, blah. Oh. One minute she sings this, then she thinks like she needs to make up her mind what she's singing. I'm just like, no, I don't. I can sing what the hell I like. By the way, the gatekeepers always have got. It's always the gatekeepers have got a problem with yeah, you. Yeah, but I'm just like I like to sing, and God gave me a voice, and I'm gonna sing. Mm. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I can only sing this type of music. I mean. Power to those types of people that sing, say, I only sing this type of music. Good for, good for them. But then... Yeah, yeah. But, but don't limit me because I like to just sing a bit of everything. Well, talent, <laughs> talent overshadows everything, doesn't mm. it? Um, how... Uh, what were the influences growing up? What were the people... I mean, here comes the standard questions, but I want to know. I want to know. What, what were the influences? We talked about Prince before mm. we even started. I mean, you know, yes. The, the, the He's God my favourite yeah. of all time. Yeah. Like, the the everything. Yeah. The everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and I think he also is probably part of the reason why I'm so versatile because he was so versatile and mm -hmm. he didn't like no one would ever say, oh, is he a jazz musician? He's a funk mm -hmm. musician. Is he a rapper? They're like, he's just Prince. Mm -hmm. And and so that's where that come from. I'm just like, you can be wherever you want to be. Like he was he just switched it up so many times. I like. Obviously, you're a Prince fan too, mm -hmm. right? Oh, so, um, um, Under the Cherry Moon soundtrack, mm -hmm. there's a song where he does this kind of like French Riviera song called mm -hmm. Do You Lie? Mm -hmm. And the BVs and the, oh, that man just, oh, melts my heart. Melt. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 you know, if there was such a thing as Man Crush, he crushed me a long time <laughs> ago, man. <laughs> no joke. Um, there was this moment. And Have you ever, did you ever get to meet I, him? I performed with him, yeah. <gasps> <laughs> I'm so jealous! No! Where? Tell me the story. Um, 2008, uh, Wembley, he did the 11 date stint thing. Yeah. But I was friends with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Beverly Knight told me because she supported him once, but she obviously got to work with him as well. And he, and he came out and he was chanting her name, going, Beverly yeah, Knight. Yeah, yeah. I was so jealous. I never got that treatment. <laughs> I never got that treatment. There was, but he, but we did like a halfway, I, I beatboxed and he guitared over top of it, doing backing vocals for Big Up Nika Costa. Cause it, it was oh, I like Nika Costa. Yeah, Everybody awesome. got that something. Mm. Oh, me. Yeah. Like a feather and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. still kills it. Yeah, now. you could tell that she's mm. a Prince fan. Did you know her? Did you know? I think it was her dad was Frank's. No, her, yeah. Her dad was one of the main band leaders for Frank Sinatra or some oh. shit. Like, yeah, she comes from. Some, she comes from yeah, yeah. music stock. But there was this moment in, in, in Prince's passing where all these videos were coming out, and there was just one moment he did this Tom Petty um, joint collaboration thing, My Guitar Gently Weeps or something. And he just came out of nowhere. And like in terms of versatility, it wasn't just his voice. He was just bonkers at guitar, bonkers at instrumentation. It's just, it's just. You know when are you a Michael Jackson fan too? Yeah, big time. Yeah. But see, I did love Michael Jackson. Mm. Um, and and uh, off the wall is one of my favorite albums of Michael Jackson. Come on. But mm -hmm. I still feel like Prince was to me. And I do get why people feel like Michael Jackson is to them. Mm. But to me, why Prince is like just just the, the, the king of the gods of the of the king of the of the I'm music. With you. Of the, because I always feel like you can always get a good Michael Jackson impersonator. Mm. Cause he kind of like, no disrespect, was like a one trick pony. Like yeah. he had he had about, you know, eight moves that he that he did throughout his whole career once he got to a certain age. And a certain look that you could emulate, and a certain way of dressing that you could emulate, so you can get really good Michael Jackson impersonators. Yes. I've never seen a great Prince impersonator <laughs> because he's got too many looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got too many sounds. Too many frequencies. Too many dance, yeah. dance moves. Yeah, you're right. His voice goes from her to her. Yeah, you know, yeah. like. So I'm yet to find somebody who just brings him alive for me. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. if they ever did his like bio story, I'd, like biopic, I'd be like, who would they get to play him? Oh my god. I know Miguel would love to play him. I can tell Miguel's a Prince fan. But yeah, ever I'm... since he jumped in the spits and nearly, <laughs> nearlier decapitated that girl, I'm like... <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> Forget it. It's too much of a hazard. The insurance can't cover that shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I, like, you know, just even one of his looks, like... Yeah, right. The, the most obvious one it was his like the thing he most got known for when he became an icon when yeah. he did Purple Rain. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then he's had so many looks since then. Yeah. you know. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to pin him down. And, yeah. and furthermore, he's he's you know he's this kind of uh, I don't know. He's just an alien. He's kind of like Bowie, whereby you you know the girls love him as much as the guys love him. His vivaciousness and his his forever pushing forward the, the you know the 
the landscape of and the potential of what you can do. You know, you can't really grapple with that. And yeah. I and I never understood why I'm still on Prince, right? <laughs> I don't know why he was the underdog to to the likes of Michael Jackson. Maybe it was just that he didn't like like you say the imitation of. Uh, Michael Jackson, it kind of falls in suit with Freddie Mercury, where it's like they branded themselves so well that actually you could go and get a wig and a moustache for about six quid. I never even thought about it like that. I guess it's a thing, isn't it? Yeah, because then obviously then people are selling you by emulating you. Mm. Like Prince is a lot harder to emulate. But um, I've got a story. (laughs) Tell me. So I never met him. I never met him. Get in. But I did did get to watch him quite a few times. Um... One of the stories is, I think, when he was doing one of them dates and he was at Ronnie Scott's mm. and he was on quite late, but people had been, like, queuing up since the day before, like, madness. And um, Vula, she... Big worked, up Vula. Yeah, I love Vula. She she used to do, like, a night there. So we got in, but it was at the show before. Mm-hmm. And then the manager was walking around saying, all right, she's got to go. She's got, like, it was, like, saying, yeah, they can't stay. Like, he was chucking people out. And, I, and he pointed to me. I was like, oh, I'm going to get chucked out. Yeah, not me, please. And I literally went and hid in the toilets for, like, an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and then I submerged yeah. <laughs> where, where Prince came on stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Darlings, I'm here. You can pop out yeah. of nowhere. Like. And another story. I So I bought my golden ticket to watch him at the O2. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then afterwards, you know, sometimes he did the after party sometimes. Mm-hmm. So his support band were up and I heard he was going to be there that night. So we got in early and I was literally leaning on the stage. There was like no barrier. Like I was literally leaning right Stop on the stage. It. And he kept looking at me and I was clapping in and he clapped with me and he pointed at me and he looked at me with his eyes and I looked at him with my eyes. That's eyebrows. everything. That, I, that's everything. I know. And then he dropped his plectrum on the floor. Uh, and I picked it up and I licked it and stuck it in my bra. You did that. I tasted his finger sweat. Damn right you did. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? Come on. I know. That's he lives amazing. within my DNA. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. much so. Yeah. You hear these you hear these stories about about um Prince and, and his his escapades, you know, and, and it becomes this folklore, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, I know people that n- knew him, like uh, I work a lot with Patrick Allen, um, that used to do Music Box Live at um, just to go Ten Rooms and Big yeah, Al and all that, yeah. 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 And um, he knew him quite well, and he said he was a bit of a dick. But uh, I think, it, I but I think it was back in the day when he used to do um, drugs. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it happens. Yeah. Branding is a thing, isn't it? Though? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, 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 I can picture Kelly LaRock on stage. I can picture with the outfit. I can picture the hair and, and you know, the pizzazz and everything. I mean, it's a very conscious, uh, um, a, a conscious decision. It seems like everything that you do on stage is meticulously in order and with reason. Thank you. It's true though, isn't it? Do you know what? My mum is a clothes designer. So my mum taught me to make clothes when I was really young. And uh. prior to that, I'd wear a lot of homemade clothes because um, my mum used to like design clothes and make them for me. So I think I always had that, that I never wore what anyone else wore. Mm. Um, and that kind of went into my adulthood from making my own clothes and then to sorting, like, because I style myself, I do my own hair, I do my own makeup. Yeah. I do everything myself. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I always try and do it of a certain level. But then I just think, if I can do all this by myself, when I get, like, the tea, mm. then we can take it to the next level. Delegating is hard, though, ain't it? It is, especially when you're, like, a control freak. Yeah, <laughs> I'm there. You're like, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not even actually that I'm... A control freak as such. It's just that I feel like if you can't do it better than me, then I'm just gonna bloody do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. like that's why I don't have a manager because I'm like, if you're not gonna introduce me to people I don't already know or take yeah. my career to another level, what am I giving you twenty percent for? I'm asking yeah, 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 keep true. it for myself and do what I'm doing. No disrespect to any of the managers yeah. out they're there. Just, they've become reactive, not proactive. Ooh. And I need someone proactive. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Because you've got you and the. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's almost like, and I've been through it in my head with the industry and, and my career. I often think to myself, well, what if I just fuck this off and go straight to America? Because then it's like, it's flat line straight, but off the, off the plane and I'm, I'm, I'm free to almost like reset, reassess and gather some momentum because you've got the skills. And, and I guess it's, it's one of those things, isn't it, where it's like, well... Who could there be better than me that could do it in any other way as I've been doing this thing for so long? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I've been in America a few times. So I actually recorded my first album in L.A. Uh, so I lived out there for like four and a half months. And I, to be honest, I love L.A. Like, L.A. is somewhere that I would live. 
Um, I've been to New York as well. I, 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 would, I, you know, I think with any any of those things, you've got to be out there. Mm. Um, and that's what it was really more than anything at the time. I couldn't afford it because I needed to be here to work. Yeah. Um, and not being that well known out there, I couldn't really generate mm. a, a good enough income that I could still pay my bills here. Mm. And then you need the visas, you oh need the this. And, and then I thought, okay, I can rent out my house. Mm. But then I had to put all my stuff away. Where am I going to put my stuff? That's a, that's mm. another mortgage in itself. Just yeah, throwing yeah, yeah, all your yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, away right. unless someone you know or trust I, lives in your have home. We ever, have we ever totaled up the cost of something like that? Just out of curiosity. No. It's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's hard to even... yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I did things like I put a floor in my loft. I was like, okay, I can st store some stuff in yeah, the yeah. loft. I've got a garage, I can store some stuff in the garage. Um, and actually, it's so mad because I went to LA, I can't remember exactly when it would be, and um, I went out there to shoot a video that I, I did through the internet with an American artist called The Ville. And um, they flew me over there and I shot the video. And it was um, directed by, um, where's my brain now? Where's my brain? Um, Shannon Elizabeth. Nice. So, um, well, re well retrieved. Very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know Shannon Elizabeth, she's an Hollywood actress and she was in American Pie. She mm -hmm. played the, the exchange student. Wow. Yeah. So she is just the most loveliest person. So I ended up like staying in her house for like a month. And then she was like, just come and live here. You Casual. Can come live yeah, you can come live with me. And and I just couldn't get my shit together. I just, it was either I was too busy mm. or then I just, I just needed to like properly like, yeah. Like rent out the house. Yeah, put it, and it's it, a lot. It was. It was. It was. It, it was overwhelming at the time. But I really regret yeah. it because for about a good year and a half, she kept saying, "When are you coming?" And then yeah. she just was like, "Sod you." You know <laughs> what? It's really hard because it's it, and it, it's obviously easier said than done. But yeah. there is this, um, uh, you know, we get in the way of our own plans, and the the, the resistance lies in. Just, it's not like you don't want to do it. It's not like it's unachievable. It's not like, yeah, okay, if I put A and B together, I'm going to mm. get C and we can put that in there. We can lock that up there. The dog can go there. Da, 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 da. Yeah. But the truth is, is like, we don't really want to go unless we have to. My thing is, I want to just have enough money that I can fly out there for three months and leave my house empty. Yeah. I don't have to think about, oh, I need to rent it out mm. so I can pay the mortgage. Mm. Da, da, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the reality. Because it's long, isn't it? It is long. You get a call from somebody saying the washing machine's bust and you're in, you know, you're and in also, a set And also, like, <laughs> I am very, like, particular and meticulous. And if someone comes to my house and breaks my shit, I'll be like, really annoyed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine... <laughs> Kelly Lerock as the landlady. Yo, I would imagine it. I've, I've been a landlady, I'm sure. My, my one big thing with all of my tenants has been cleanliness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, they all probably moan about that. She always wants to clean. She's always moaning about cleaning. I love that. Yeah. Comment below. Go. <laughs> <laughs> big up all the tenants. Mm. Um, yo, yeah, it's a crazy one. And... I mean, this journey of yours has really taken you into some uh, pretty higher class uh, uh, roads and cul-de-sacs and avenues where you, you park up nicely in these these really genre specific, yet uh, you know, great, fruitful, you know, gigs, shows, collaborations. The Garage thing had this revival that out of... 2014, 2015, it just suddenly just started yeah, coming back into... It, it did, it really did. Wow, and really and did. you you went back on the crown, uh, you know, put the crown back on and went back in the seat and just, you know, like... Yeah, I've been really lucky to have, you know, a, f a couple big anthems in that genre. Mm. And the one great thing about House and Garage Music is it's kind of got this, um, this kind of like, just this... You know, because I always say that there's two things that, that that create time travel as we know it, and they are um, smells and music. And that's what Gary's does. It's a time machine. Like, I just see this, like, I see these people's faces. I see their eye, I see them light up because I've just taken them back in time to, like, their first mm. girly holiday, mm. their first true love, mm -hmm. before kids, before bills, before, like, drama, when they were young and yeah, fresh yeah, yeah, and yeah, living yeah, yeah. their best lives. I and Appa, like, I see it. I, I literally see it. And people say it. They're like, oh, my God, that just took me back in time. Uh, so, it, you know, it's just a really beautiful thing to be able to give to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's why I just love the genre. I just think it's such a really nice, happy, bubbly, just wholesome genre. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish all songs 
weren't just seen as future nostalgia, but the truth is, it is. And I just wish we could fast f any new release we put out. Just let's just fast forward it by six is it years. Is it yeah, yeah. So no, because you know, it's like it, you really do. You're right. It, you you capture just people's sweet spots, their imagination. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's always that, like I, I do so many like weddings and birthdays and and do you know, and they always say, "Oh my god, this was my song." Like I I did a wedding in Ibiza. And my song was part of their courtship. Like, oh. he had it as his ringtone and she was like, I want that ringtone. How's that and feel? How's that feel? Just amazing. Like, just so tough. Like, I always say, uh, it's just always such an honour and such a blessing, mm. like, to be part of that magic and to be part oh, of yeah. their special day like that. Mm. And, you know, and just the feedback is always just, like, so just, I just hope people keep playing it to their kids. Mm. <laughs> so that I get to be singing forever mm. because yeah, 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 yeah. Keep when I'm on stage sometimes, I'm just like, I'm so lucky. Yeah. Like, all right, I'm not Beyonce, but come on. Like, I get to prance around on stage in a fringy outfit with red hair. Like, <laughs> you know, you're kind of like... In cowboy boots. You're, you, no, because I... I Am I garage Beyonce? You are, but it's more than that. I think, I think you know, and this is this is why it was important to have you on the podcast, because, you know, part of street culture and the legacy and the tapestry of... We're all interlinked in one form or another over here. And... Uh, I love your wordplay. Yeah. I guess you are a wordsmith. Yeah, I'm a word... I, yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, you heard it here. Um, but genuinely, uh, I don't think it's the right terminology for, for for a lady, of course, but, you know, it's that last of Mohican kind of uh, bastion of like, yeah, uh, well, Kelly's here doing it. You know what I mean? And she's up there rocking it and it's trusted. And, you know, you know, I mean, not just from females, I think from a male point of view as well. It's like, it's just, I don't think that's part of the nostalgia, but I also feel like, you you really do own Kelly. You know what I mean? It's like thank you. it's true. Thank so no one else does that. That thank does you. it like that, thank right? Thank you. Thank you. Have you ever uh, you ever been married? No. 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 I'm, st I'm I've been single for like four years. Four years. I'm really picky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what, why is that? What's the uh, what's the deal with that? Um, I think I'm very independent, and I will say that's from necessity. I don't. I wouldn't. Say, I would say that I don't. Like, I do genuinely think that independence is overrated. Mm. But my mum obviously brought me up by herself, so she's a very strong, powerful woman. She, mm. she, you know, she she taught me in the ways of being a strong, independent, powerful woman. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I intimidate men. Do you? Yeah, and I kind of blame feminism a little bit. I think women are so, like... And, yes, I'm not going to deny that the feminist, the feminist movement hasn't created opportunities for us as women. Um, but I will say, like, the hardcore ones, they've really emasculated men mm. or to the point where they feel Ooh. like they don't have to be men or they're afraid to be men. Mm. Like, for example, a guy the other day, I was carrying something heavy and... No, my, my friend was carrying something heavy and I was like, oh, when are you going to help her? Mm. And he goes, oh, I wasn't sure because the other day I got up to let a woman sit down on the train and she told me off. Yeah, that happens. You know, so I'm just like, no, can mm. you just let our men be men, please? Yeah, I feel you. Allow that. Like, yeah. because now they're afraid to be men and then there are really, like, you know, just, yeah. like, masculine women that are just, like male bashing them yeah. and no, they're not stepping up to the plate and then they become an intimidated by powerful women which I, I think it's really important for us to know our roles irregardless of whether we were born a man or a woman I mean I just really oh. like men that are men uh. and women that are women yeah. you know like yes I'm independent but I cook I clean I sew yeah, yeah, do you know yeah, what yeah, I mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 100, 100% yeah um, that's a deep it's a deep one isn't it because I, maybe to a, to a greater extent maybe it is our generation, yeah, because I certainly feel that we're the last of that, though. Yeah, I we think are we are, and that's what's yeah. that's actually. I'm not sure whether that's uh, a sign of the times and quite a scary prospect, or whether it's like, oh, okay, we'll just go with the flow because mm. we'll always know better, mm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But you're right; the the influence on that, which then uh, you know, it filters through to TV, and then you know, then you 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 end up having conversations with people, at, you know, just setting the record straight mm, and, mm. and of course being in the public eye that's even more of a like yeah there's that as well because also as well you don't know if you don't know if people's intentions are sincere mm. because it's a different it's a little bit different with male groupies to female groupies but like oh you know because yeah i get groupies but but do they want a wife for me or they do or they just want to like you know mm. a, a good time you know yeah. you just never know so i i don't really date people i meet at gigs and stuff like that i don't really yeah. date artists yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's not there's there's not there's not there's not a 
big pool for me to pick from, really. Um, <laughs> well, you know, like, I, I mean, I guess it's different from an artist to artist, but I guess when you're on the ground... Do you have children? No. See, I don't have children no, no, either. No, no, I'm not really too much about that. Do you know what? I, I wanted children, but I wanted a family. Mm. I didn't just want to have children. Yeah. So I did look into, actually, last year into getting a sperm donor. Oh, really? Yeah, and then I... I, I'm just like, I actually quite like my life. And my house isn't very baby-proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah, if, it, yeah. if I if I met someone and, you know, we got married and it happened, it happened. But I, I think I might be a childless one, you know. You reckon? Maybe. I mean, everyone always says I'd make a great mum because I'm so nurturing and loving. But I'm a bit selfish too, you know. I'm just really set in my own ways. This is this is the thing. It's, it's almost like the... And children are so needy. Yeah. See, it's cursed. Little narcissists. I always right. I'm going to be controversial because I find because there's plenty of awesome artists and people. I'm joking. Kids that, are great. Quizzy yeah, yeah, they listen. they're great. They're great. <laughs> Take my after six thirty. But it's, you know what I mean. It's yeah. like I I haven't got the attention span for that. And and as selfish as it sounds, um, I can tolerate this. I yeah. can tolerate me and this and what I do. Yeah. The idea of, I mean, some people would call it. You know, just selfish that I don't. But yeah, and now it's the other way around in my mind because I'm thinking, well, I don't want to bring people up into something that they're compromised in being because yeah. I'm doing an artist thing. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, yeah, it's yeah. tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's tough. It is tough. And you know, power to anyone that kind of like makes it work. Yeah. You know, you just really do need a really good support network, or you need lots of money to mm. pay for a support yeah. network. <laughs> do yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you need like an au pair or something because I always say one of the things that just pet me is a school run mm. I don't know how people do no. that like every day at the same time <laughs> like oh just like that's that to me is like I think when you're creative and one day you're here and the next day you're there and one, like the thought of doing something at the same time every day just fills me with dread oh, me. <laughs> and you the way that I mean and also right and this is maybe it's just a British thing because I know there's a lot of people from out of town out of country that watch this but in England especially London predominantly being here there's this conforming of um and it's certain that you can tell when there's a, a, a mum that's coming down the road just by the truck that she's driving in <laughs> central light in the middle of the road. Just get out of the way. I'm with my kids. My kids matter. I've got to get to the, yeah. you know, and they all do it. Yeah. And, but yeah. It, it, I, the amount of times people have run me over with their push chairs. Yeah. It's just like rude. Yeah, it's bonkers, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. It's bonkers. Um, yeah. And it's, again, it's a sign of times. Do you think with music we um, we have a, 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 a uh, what's the word? Um, we have a mission brief and a purpose which is to translate what's going on in the here and now into song form as archive to the state of the world. I mean, Prince, no. Prince is a big... <laughs> yeah. I would say no, just because I'm not very... Um, I wouldn't say I'm a very political um, when it comes to like my writing. I'm, 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 I'm not saying I've never written kind of political records, but I'm not really political about it. But I do have an ethos mm. and I do have a message and it's love. That is my message. Sure, so, ethos. Yeah, so I have that little conversation all the time when I'm on stage mm. and I, yeah, I call myself the Love Meister. Come on. Because I'm like, most of my songs are about love and, you know, when I was very young, I was just like, I want to make the world a better place for my music. Yeah. And I would yeah. say love is one of the highest vibrations in the universe. Yeah. And so, you know, and we just need more love in the world. We do. And we need higher vibrations. Since lockdown, everyone was in fear, mm. with very low vibrations. So... That's my gift to the world, to raise the <laughs> universal vibrations and to spread love and positive energy. It's mad when you think about the things we did in lockdown, you know, to just... I kind of miss it in some ways, you know. Yeah. I like, what were you like, doing? You was, it was food, wasn't it? It was food-related stuff you were, you were Yeah, I mean, I'm always it? cooking anyway, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, to, I say that, I've not cooked properly in ages because I've been so busy, but, um, like, I love cooking. Mm. Yeah, that's another thing that I really enjoy doing. What other interests, come on, for, the, for, the, for, the, um, for, the, for those that don't know need to know what, what, what other, other so I do have another page called what La Rock is cooking where I do my cooking my mum taught me to cook Come as well on. um I do clothes design so I love to make my own clothes um I also do interior design so I had a fire did you know I had a fire during you, lockdown you had a fire I had a fire Go on, what, so, <laughs> how did this all come about uh, it was an electrical fire they think it was caused by my xbox no reflection on Xbox, but um, <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, obviously it was tragic and it was traumatizing, but ultimately it was the best thing that happened that year because I got to like just redo my whole house. Yeah, so it's cold. Your house is looking lovely as well. I oh, mean, thank you. It looks you even know. lovelier now. Get in. Yeah. And also as well, what had happened is I had planted bamboo when I landscaped my garden 10 years before and it had right. literally taken over my whole garden. 
If you don't know about bamboo <laughs> and you're planting bamboo, take it out of the ground. Do not put bamboo in the ground because what it does, it travels along under the ground. It makes a thing called a rhizome, which is like a bit of um, ginger. Then a new plant will come up and it'll keep doing that, but it does it under the ground. So you don't know it's doing it and it can go through concrete. Next thing you know, it'll be what? in your house. You'll just see a, a bamboo coming up in the middle of the kitchen. Like the guys, because I had to get it professionally excavated. The guys that came in, they said they did a woman's house the week before. It had gone through the concrete and she just had bamboo coming up in the middle of her kitchen. Sounds like a horror film. It is like a, when I took it up, it was like alien invasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Day of the Triffids. Like literally, they were just everywhere. Like it was like, like crisscross network. It, I was just like, I, I had PTSD for ages. Yeah, I bet. Even to this day, because it started to go into both my neighbour's gardens. Stop it. I look out the window just to see, can I see any bamboo shoots? Can I see any bamboo shoots? Oh shoes? my God. Like literally. Like, Infestation of yes, bamboo. Yeah, so I had to have my whole garden excavated and I've literally only just got it back together. It took over two years because obviously because of lockdown, I couldn't get anyone. No, no, no. And then everyone was busy because everyone was doing up their gardens. Yeah, I knew it. So it's... only just like, it's not, it's, even still, it's got a few minor things left mm. to do, but yeah. Never mind, never mind, you know, the, the criminality of the world when we're on lockdown and all the activity. Bamboo. Bamboo. Is bamboo. Making a, yeah, bamboo is making sure that it's... Uh... I mean, it's, it's highly sustainable, but don't grow it in your garden. I mean, that's the great thing about mm. it. Like, you can build, like, houses in four years. Like, it, yeah, yeah, the yeah. bamboo... The, from, you know, to build a whole house can be grown in four yeah. years, whereas from wood, it's like 25 years or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, and also, they use it as scaffolding in, in Asia, yeah. don't they? Yeah, because it's so thing. strong. Yeah, it's yeah. so strong. It can Crazy. go through concrete. 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 <laughs> hey. <laughs> like, people are like, oh, don't worry, I've like concrete. No, mm. no. <laughs> don't <laughs> trust that bamboo. And, and you know, uh, there was also, it was, I call it Ratgate, which was fucking incredible. It was, it, I was literally going on the stories to see what the update was. Do you know what? <laughs> I, yes, so where I had the garden all turned up and I wasn't going in the garden, mm. down the back of my garden, I have had mm -hmm. grapevines and rats were coming and eating them and mm. just hanging out in my garden. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, they had to go. They had to go. Like, just pigeons and the rats. And also there's, like, in, at the back of my neighbour's garden that backs mm. onto my garden, they've got some tree that has fruits on it. I don't know what the fruits are. Oh, okay. But the birds will eat that as well and then come and the shit drop, in my garden. Yeah, yeah. All that sort of so stuff. So I had to pull the spikes up. But I've got rid of the, the grapevines now and I haven't seen any rats. Mm. So that's good. So your progress is a slow process. And when yeah. you're... Yo, when I you're, was you're, petrified to go in my garden because I do, I, I do not like rats. And... When the rat man came, he said, oh, yeah, yeah, there's about four rats here. He goes, that means there's probably about eight, ten rats. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once you once they pop, they don't stop. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> again, like going back to the childproof thing, I guess, uh, <laughs> you've got to try these things out, right? You yeah. Know, this, is, this is your habitat. This is your tranquil space, you know. Um, how important is that to you? How important is that? You know, because you, you're going to raves and you're doing everything every yeah. weekend. And again, you know, just going via the stories, like you're always traveling. You're always in a taxi, always driving, always getting somewhere. Yeah. You, you must you must need like a re-up of at least two days or three Do days. you know what? When lockdown first lifted and I, and I started back at work, I just couldn't get, get my stamina back. It took me a while to get the stamina back. Like even just getting ready would take me three and a half hours. Cause oh. I was like, oh, I can't do this. Yeah. Um, but now I'm, I'm back on it, man. I, I, in all honesty, I just don't even know how I do it. I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I don't do drugs. I don't drink caffeine. Mm. I just have a natural exuberant because it's something I'm passionate about mm. and I get it done. But yes, coming home, like, so say like, for example, if I've been on it, like gig here, gig there, you know, one, I think, uh, Jubilee weekend, I had six gigs, you know, like, Whoa. so like, I'll come home and I'll literally be in bed for about three days, yeah. you know, just, just watching a box set. I don't have a TV, yeah. so I watch box sets. So I'll watch a box set, just chill. That would be me. Like, Do you ever get the guilt of resting for a bit? I used to, but I don't anymore. Why is that? Because I work bloody hard. Yeah, yeah, so I'm yeah. like, so if I want to spend a week doing sweet fanny abs, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> or dub plates, I might add. It was a, it was a, it was, <laughs> it was a four wheel drive, and in because I've always thought to myself, yo, yeah. just fucking throw a, a status up saying what well, I'm doing dub plates. Yeah, you must have been inundated. I because I get offers, like I get messages all the time to do dub plates. So I basically do them all in one day. I call it dub plate day. <laughs> so I do them about three times a year. So I try and collect a few, but the last dub plate day, I, it, I'd taken forever to do it. So I had to do the backlog plus a couple new ones. So I did like 25 dub plates. Oh. Yeah. But um, 
But also as well, I like to sing my duplex from top to bottom. I don't like just do like a little thing at the beginning and then add it. I like to just like name check it all the way through. Then I do all the BBs nice. and do wow. the name check in the, in the choruses and stuff like that. So I like to give people their, their value for money. That's so cool. Yeah, so yeah. And then, and then I give them an acapella as well so they can mix it on a track of their choosing. That's no mean stuff. feat. That is some serious work. Yeah, it is serious work. But I'm, I like to give a premium product. Yeah. So I'd be like, what's your favourite dub plate that you got? Kelly Rock one, isn't it? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Yo, what's the, what's the price on the double So I do one for 150 or two for 250 Nice. Yeah, so you don't, you get don't bad at all. You get a little bargain. I've thrown free jingles as well. Yo. Yeah, jingles you can have for free. Jingles, see? Um, in a landscape of mediocrity, what do you look for in talent, Kelly in Rock? Talent. I think someone with a unique... I mean, with just a unique vibe... Um, just something about them that just kind of stands out. Mm. Like, might be a way of dressing, a way they perform, mm. their voice, uh, their songs, you know. Um, like I said, everyone's kind of very clony. Mm. Um, so I, um, yeah, it's like, even like today as I was getting ready, um, I I have like a Spotify account and... Um, you know, when they, they make soundtracks for you, cause, like, according to what you listen to mm. and stuff. And literally, this soundtrack just sounded like the same person on every song. I kept, like, looking at them, like, who is this? Who is this? Like, they all sound the same. Who is this? You know? Um, and they were kind of, like, new up-and-coming mm. artists kind of thing. And, um, yeah, just... Go back to my 80s street song, thank you very much. a bit of wow about them, you know? There's something... Is there, is there anything... Anyone out there that you're just like, yo, they are absolutely shy? I love Brie Runway. I think uh, she's amazing. Um, she's doing big things. She's very unique. Very, like, got her own vibe. Every time I see her, she just looks like a superstar. Even before she was she was signed, she just... I used to see her out and you'd be like, who's that girl? Nice. She's just got star quality. She has. She's amazing. And... Um, when I did Rampage's takeover show on One Extra um, for Ladies' Day, Women's Day, mm -hmm. International Women's Day, mm -hmm. um, they were like, who do you want? And um, and I said, I want Brie Runway. <laughs> That's so sick. So, you know, just speak like, oh, we'll, we'll Kelly Rock getting... wants you, you know what I mean? Yeah, they were like, we're going to get Georgia Smith. I was like, no, 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 no. I want Brie Runway. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Call it and get it. Yeah. Um, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you? Craziest moment that's ever happened to you on, on, on road? Craziest moment that's ever happened to me on road. Something we just like, yo, that's out of body. When would I ever get to explain that of that happening to anybody ever? Mm. Those kind of ones. I'm going to give you one that isn't... Um, it's, it's... I want to give it to you. Okay. Uh, so, I name all my cards. And I'm also big on, like, as you know, the universe. Mm -hmm. And um, my religion is love and gratitude. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm big on all that. Just just higher in vibrations, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Just being connected and... Um, I look out for signs. You know, like sometimes when you when you get the eleven elevens and whatever, like I'm into that stuff. It's yeah, a yeah. bit twee, but I'm into I'm it. With it. So um I just got my Jeep, Gina, and but I hadn't named her yet. So I done fifty first date that day. It's about three, four years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, I think maybe four years. I done fifty first date that day and then I had another gig. So I left all my friends at fifty first date and then I went to my other gig. And it was in like Pearly or something. So I parked up my car in the forest and walked through. And as I was walking back and I was looking at Gina, I was like, I know, orange Gina. Because I name all my cars, but it's got to be organic. Uh, she's orange, by the way. Boom. She's like bright orange. Right. I didn't pick her, she picked me. Right? Okay. I, didn't, I never said I want an orange car. <laughs> um, so it came to me, I was like, orange Gina. Gina, that's the name of my car. So I'm driving home and I'm like, oh, I'm a bit hungry. I'm going to go drive through. So I went to Kentucky drive through. Mm -hmm. And um, as I pulled up, the guy goes to me, oh, my God, I love your car. It's so nice. I said, thank you. I said, I've just named her. I said, her name is Gina. And he points to his name tag. And guess what his name tag said? No. Guess what it said? Uh, not Gina. It did say Gina. And I said, your name's not Gina. He said, I know. He goes, no. He goes, I forgot my name tag today and I just took one out of the bowl. Uh, I was really reluctant to say Gina as it was a bloke, but yeah. that actually makes it even more a twist of fate. I know. I was uh, like, universe? Universe? That's amazing. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a few serendipity moments that happen like yeah. that in your life and you say to yourself, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, that's why I, I just know the universe has got my back. Just uh, things like that. That's not, how can that be a coincidence? That's uncanny. You know what I mean? Uncanny. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, okay, uh, last subject. 
I really want to get into it. Your favourite item of clothing that you got. Uh, that I've got. Your favourite item, Kelly Lou Rock, if you were to, if there was another fire in your house for one day and you had the opportunity to take one oh, thing. God. And it's a fashion item that is just your, the love of your, what you got? God. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I got too many. All right, there is this yeah, one. Yeah, can I just not take the cupboard, the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> there is this one belt that I have three times mm. <laughs> because I loved it so much. It's like a little vintage belt that I searched online for it. So I have I have it. It's like I have the same belt three times. Really? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a Jose Cattell belt. Ooh. Yeah. And like even my cousin be like, why are you always in this belt? I'm like, I've got three of them. It's yeah. not the same belt. <laughs> but um I would say it's one of my treasured possessions. Like if I could have two more I would. Accessories <laughs> are it really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because I like... wear the hell out of them and like they're like perspex like with embellished like these kind of metal wear with like crystals and stuff and and um they're they're all a bit worse for wear because I literally wear the hell out of them. It's the way to do it. Yeah. So if I could get a couple more, I would. Mm. <laughs> there is this theory that you know, I like you know some people collect sneakers and stuff like yeah. that and they don't want them bo unboxed or anything. Yeah. I'm like, get them out of the box and wear the things. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what it's all about, isn't Life it? Life is short, man. You need to just like do everything you can. Like if you if someone said to you, you're going to die next year. Wouldn't you do, you'd wear all the sneakers, you'd go all the places, mm. you'd do as much as you could. Yeah, yeah, do you know 100%. what I mean? I always think that about people like that just die and, and, and they weren't ill or anything and it's really tragic and just sudden. And you're like, if did they know, like if they knew this was their last year or their yeah. last month or their last week on earth, would they have done things differently? Oh yeah, I would be, if I, if I only I knew I only had like six months to live or something, I'd be wearing all my clothes like Joey did in Friends and just like walking <laughs> in wearing absolutely everything. Well then do you know what? We need to just live our lives like we've got six months to live every day. That's the ticket. That is the live ticket. Live like you've got six months. And also there is a theory about um, when you're wearing accessories, right? You take one a bit away. Oh, no. I never do that shit. Do you know what? I'm a more is more person. <laughs> but I do equally acknowledge that sometimes uh, you can look tacky as opposed to classy. Mm. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, okay, that's a bit much, babe. Take that. Just pull it back a little bit. Do you sense that? You can sense that? I, th I hope I can. I think you can. I'm not saying I've never made bad fashion decisions, but I think I'm quite seasoned now and I've been doing this a while and... I always like how I put my outfits together. Mm. And they are extra, but extra in the sense of because I'm a performance artist, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not extra like, mm, that's a bit tacky. Yeah, exactly. I and hope so anyway. No, 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 it's true. It's true because it, I don't know what it is about being on stage and performing, but you can under, you can always underdress. You yeah. can't overdress. Yeah, yeah, There's exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I, I, um, I'm fond of cat suits. So I've got a little. Yeah, I'm known as the cat suit queen. Yeah, yeah, because I love a cat suit. As yeah. Well. So um, I'm I think I think cat suits are fond of you as well. Oh, thank you. They, they, this works. <laughs> well, I'm hoping to do my own line soon. Really? Yeah. To so look out for it. Hopefully early bang, next year. Bang bang! There yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Don't know now, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So yeah. And the future is evergreen you're going to keep on doing kelly and keep on doing shows and keep on no, i'm just gonna pack it all in. stop it, <laughs> just pack it all none in. of this no i'm actually i'm in a i'm in a reality show as well it's called no housewives in the south <gasps> coming next year so it's like um kind of like entrepreneurial women like kind of doing the damn thing doing the thing yeah i mean they've, some of them have got partners but it's um it's uh it's yeah it's just like yeah like entrepreneurial independent women just doing their thing does that make it cheating when they got couples, but they're, they're single. Because, you know, that, that it's leaves... It's not when the woman's a boss, like a boss... I'm going to say boss bitch, but I hate that term. Like, she's a boss queen. Like, like you but know... In the back of your mind, you must be turning around as, as they're talking, going, you don't even know, because you're not even single. But I've been in relationships where I've had a man and I'm still the breadwinner. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it doesn't matter sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or true. if you're equal, like you're, you're both you know, trying to work towards the same goal, yeah. your, your teammates. Mm. I think that's a beautiful thing. I think that's super important. It's yeah. I mean, in an ideal world, I'll just have a really rich man who just takes care of me. Yeah, yeah. And then I can sing for fun. There you go. All right, <laughs> you see? Yeah, I well, mean, I do sing for fun. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, they, they, they doesn't, you exude that again, that same yeah. word I can't say, but you do, your rapport and the way that you, um, you know, spread that love. Oh, is like, you. you. know, that, that you. That's, it's obvious that you love Oh, thank you so much. And um, viva la Kelly the Rock, more. Thank more, you. please. Thank um, you. 
To the day I die, baby, to the day I die. That's what we want to hear. (laughs) It's been fantastic having you on. Thanks for having me. I've had a lovely time. Yeah, (laughs) more. Killer Keller podcast, Sound Like You Was Out of Fashion, you know, doing it properly, all right? Um, Crime don't pay, but neither do they. This hair's really long. Yeah, no, it's dim, I didn't. You (laughs) know when they talk to you, you see, yeah, go on, give it a go. One, two, three. Did you do it? Yeah, look how long it is. Yeah, see? Guinness World of Records. You know, this is when a man <laughs> ages, right? You see what goes on here? It's great you, at the tip. Go, oh, like, yeah, yeah, well, that too. But yeah. this is... Um, oh, they get long like that. This is eyebrow lash. Yeah, that's for geezers it does, yeah. Oh. Clearly. Yeah. And nose hair. Nose hair, yes, which is something I absolutely fear. <laughs> you, know, you know, sometimes I wake up and the butler's pulling on it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> anyway, you know, we're out like it was out of fashion before I get plucked anymore. <laughs> you lot get the pluck out of here. Killer Killer Podcast, out like it was out of fashion. Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. Thank Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> hey, <baby. laughs>